Hey, and that's right, there we are. It's me, John Park, and this is John Park's workshop. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, yeah, how about that? Uh, I got a new uh, sound making toy to play around with. So that was, uh, that was a little uh, impromptu looping thing with a piece of software called Awake running on a piece of hardware called Fates. Uh, I'll talk more about it sometime online, how about? Uh, hey, Matambale over in YouTube chat. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, we've got people over in the YouTube chat, and we've got people over here on our Discord. So if you're, uh, if you're looking to hang out and chat, there could be worse places than Discord. In fact, it's a great place. Come on, stop, stop on by to the uh, Adafruit Discord. There's always something fun going on there. That's what I say. Uh, all right, well, we've got a lot of interesting stuff to chat about today. Um, first of all, let's see. Uh, audio levels are okay today. Thank you, C. Grover. Always on the watch for the audio levels. And I don't think I've got the crazy fump, 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 fump thing going on today because I'm taking better care of my mixer, or at least how I use its knobs. All right, uh, so the first thing I actually wanted to talk to you about today is we have a little countdown timer happening over here on, oh, I've broken it already. Hold on, let me, let me uh, tell the thing to go look at another thing. Stand by. I thought I had checked that. How did I make that go away? Hang on. I'm going to bring up my uh, Firefox browser here. There we go. And uh, it's the Adabox countdown. So if you're interested in subscribing, uh, the next data box, data box 14, is going to be coming out in 52 days and 7 hours and 55 minutes and 32 seconds. Uh, so go sign up. It's going to be shipping sometime in De December, we're saying. I think it was going to be late November. It looks like it's in December. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be holiday themed. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be cool, beautiful, interesting, hack worthy. I think you'll like it. So uh, go check it out, huh? You can go to data box at uh, adafruit.com slash adabox and sign up. You can subscribe and, uh, and then you won't miss it. So I encourage you to do that sooner rather than later because these do tend to sell out. Uh, all right, well, what else have we got? Uh, let's uh, talk about the job board. If you go to Adafruit's jobs board, that's jobs.adafruit.com, you can post uh, if you're looking to hire someone or you can post your own info if you're looking for a job. Here's an interesting one. City director at Blue Stamp Engineering. They're looking for an, an entrepreneurial, motivated, kind, and tech-savvy person to join their staff as director level in the California Bay Area. Uh, read on to find out what they do, because I haven't yet, so I don't know. But it looked interesting. Uh, let's click it. Why not? Ooh. Ah. Now accepting applications for summer 2020. I believe they, uh, they do education of some kind. Yeah, elevate your high school experience. Blue Stamp Engineering, hands-on engineering camp. Hey, that sounds really cool. Go check that out. Uh, just go to jobstudyfruit.com. You will see that posting right there along with lots of others. All right, uh, and let's see. What have we got next? Oh, I don't think I mentioned this, but this is our coupon code. For today, if you want to go to the Adafruit store and buy some great stuff on your way out, don't forget to enter in this coupon code, which is honk honk. That's H-O-N-K dash H-O-N-K honk honk. That's going to get you 10% off in the store on all of the actual physical things that you can buy. Uh, the exception being sub uh, sub subscriptions, software, and gift certificates. My gosh, I will never cleanly get away with saying those three <laughs> three things next to each other. Uh, and Honk Honk is going to get you 10% off on your way out, so please check it out. And if you're wondering, geez, what should I get? I don't know what I want to get. There's so many cool things available in the Adafruit store. I'm guessing that's what you're wondering. Perhaps I can uh, guide you towards this, my favorite solder sucker. This is the uh, engineering brand, or engineer brand. It's made in Japan. It's a deluxe solder sucker. So I don't have my other one here. It's, oh, yeah, it is. So a lot of you might have one of these, and these work quite well. I've had this one forever, and it uh, still holds up strong. It's got kind of a Teflon tip, so it avoids melting. Um, and you can clear it out every once in a while. Spring-loaded, sucks your solder when you're trying to fix a mistake. 
And uh, this, uh, this uh, engineer brand one has a little silicone tip, which is really nice because it's a, it's a bit smaller. It gets around uh, little components a little easier than that larger Teflon tip. And uh, it's silicone, so it's heat resistant, so it's not going to melt uh, on your soldering iron tip. And you just click down to uh, spring load it, and then hit that button, and it sucks up a whole big bunch of solder. And then after a while, you open it up. Uh, and it comes with a, a tube, uh, oh, let me get that in front of the camera, that you can uh, cut off little bits of to add if you lose one or if you break one somehow or permanently clog it somehow. I'm not sure how you do that. Uh, you can trim off a little uh, piece of the spare tubing and put it on there. I think we also sell spare tubing on its own. But anyway, that's my pick of the week. I really like this solder sucker. And um, building this... Here, let me, sh let me show you this thing I was talking about. Uh, this board I built... Where's my overhead? How about this one for a second? Uh, the lights are low on that one because of my make code minute. It has LEDs in it. But let me see if I can successfully bring this in here. Uh, this is the little gizmo that was playing our uh, song earlier at the top of the show. Here, I'll mess with my exposure. Um, and I made some little mistakes along the way in, uh, in some of my soldering, and I needed to, I bridged some components, and I needed to suck that solder out of there, and so I used my little uh, pro-grade solder sucker there, and it saved the day, I think, because it's now working. Uh, just about working, I should say. Got one issue remaining on it, but... Uh, that's how it goes sometimes. All right, uh, so that's my pick of the week. That's right, it's this lovely solder sucker. Why don't you go check that out? And now, uh, that brings us to... That's right, it's the Make Code Minute. And I'm gonna bring up my Chrome browser here where I've got make code running and uh, let me also throw in a little overhead view of my board and I'm going to fix that camera here. Oh, actually that'll work. That exposure is okay. Uh, so I wanted to show you an example today in make code minute of threading. Now in dealing with microcontrollers, sometimes you'll run into this issue of it being difficult to do two things at once. One of the very cool things about make code is that it is threaded or multi-threaded. So it can do two things at the same time without them really bumping into each other. Uh, and so in this case, you'll see I've got a little array of five NeoPixel LEDs lighting up, turning off, lighting up, turning off. And I'm doing that with this forever loop here that you see selected. And you can see the way I'm running through that is I have an index of numbers that goes uh, 0, 2, 3, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 to light them up, and then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 to turn them black. I have a second one that's not running right now, and I've just encased this in an if-false-then, which just is a handy on-off switch loop. Uh, inside of here, I'm running the other five NeoPixels. So for this, I'm using a little uh, array that I built. Let me put that in view of 98765. And those first go blue, and then they go black. So if you see my simulator here right now, I'm only running the red ones. If I flip this to true, I now have essentially two forever loops running at the same time. I didn't need to do anything fancy. It's a real uh, joy to not have to bump your head up against dealing with uh, interrupts and, and other tricky methods of doing two things at the same time. It just works for you. So uh, I appreciate that greatly. Uh, because it's one of those things that can trip you up in code. Uh, and it's one of the really nice things about building your projects inside of Make Code. So that is how you can very simply achieve threading two different sets of instructions at the same time inside of Make Code running on your Circuit Playground Express. And that is your Make Code Minute. All right, let's take that out of the way. Uh, so let's see, I think it's time to jump into our project of the week. So 
the project of the week, week this week, I've been uh, showing off little bits of it online and on the uh, show and tell last night. And this is my Goose Game uh, controller mask. So first of all, what the heck is this Goose Game that I keep talking about? So I'm going to pop up a view here of the uh, main workshop camera. And let me also add a small bench cam in the corner. And you can see there's a nice goose mask. Um, and so what I've got running here, let me sneak underneath a wire there. I've got a external monitor here. Uh, hello again. And uh, this is running uh, off of my laptop here. I'm running Goose Game. And so Goose Game, if I press begin, and let me turn up some external audio. And launch the game. Okay, so uh, this is Goose Game. It's this uh, wonderful little game where you have a peaceful village full of people just trying to live their daily lives, read the newspapers, uh, update the prices on the items in their tiny little shop, uh, kick a soccer ball, play around, and so on. Uh, but you'll notice there's an instruction here that says, press space to honk. And so if I press space, it reveals our protagonist, the horrible goose. Uh, so you can play this with the mouse and keyboard. You can also play it on a controller, as you'll see me playing here. Uh, and so I can strut around, waddling like an arrogant little awesome goose. Uh, and one of the key things that you have, uh, th that you can do, is honk at people. Uh, and it's a way of achieving tasks in the game. So if I look at the uh, tasks that are available in this area, uh, one of them says, make the boy wear the wrong glasses. Another says, uh, trap the boy in the phone booth. Okay, so this one's a lot of fun. So basically, if I press the honk button, this kid kind of gets upset. And people react differently. And so as I menace the poor kid, I can maybe eventually trap him inside of a phone booth. Um, so what I decided I wanted to do is we had seen a video, and I'm forgetting the, the uh, streamer's name, but there's a, a Twitch streamer who makes really great controllers for different games. Uh, and he had uh, built a costume, a goose costume, and uh, in it he had a, I think it was a plastic beak or car cardboard beak uh, that when he moved it, it would cause the goose inside the game to honk. He also had some other controls, I think, maybe not for movement, but for wing flapping um, and maybe crouching. So uh, what I wanted to do was build a mask uh, that would start with just a simple plastic goose mask. Um, and a, a short aside here, they don't really sell plastic goose masks in the United States of America for some reason. They only have duck masks. Uh, they're all yellow, so I bought a couple of those, and then I masked off the bill and spray-painted. Uh, let me switch views here. Uh, I spray-painted a couple of these, uh, left the beak yellow, um, and that's my starting point. So I don't know why, but if you look online, they're available in the UK. Uh, lots of geese masks in the UK, not so much here. Um, so anyway, once, once you've made your, your goose mask or accepted the fact that maybe you're going to start with a duck mask. Uh, what I wanted to do was add the monster mask so that I could put realistic eyes in. And what you'll notice about these masks is that you're actually looking through the nose slits. And so these eyes, uh, when you buy the mask, they're covered, um, molded plastic, the same as the rest of the mask. So I cut those out. And that's where we're going to be able to see our uh, terrifying pale blue goose eyes. I'll still be able to see through here. And then with the monster mask embedded in here, we can use the PDM microphone as a uh, sound sensor so that when I honk, my goose honks. So that's the goal here. Let's, um, let me head back over to the workstation here. And we'll take a look at how this is achieved. So I'm going to go ahead and let's actually bring up a little overhead cam. So here is one I was testing on. So this is a monster mask and PDM microphone. So you can see here I can plug in a Stemma QT connector. That's this tiny JST SH 4-pin connector. And this is a breakout board with a PDM microphone on it. 
Uh, and so with this connected, let me go ahead and plug this in. Uh, what I'm doing, and this is, this is one of those uh, great things about microcontrollers, is it's very simple with most of the uh, microcontrollers that we favor these days, the, uh, particularly the Cortex-M0 and M4-based microcontrollers. It's quite simple to do USB um, Did we just lose? Yeah, we just lost audio. I think, sorry about that. I think you lost audio. I, I made us lose audio. That was my bad. Um, yeah, that was weird. I switched over to one of my camera views and it, it dropped it. I'm back. Um, so hopefully that will catch up uh, with everyone in a second. So uh, explaining that again. Thank you, Donald. Hey, it's Maker Project Lab, our good friend Donald Bell. Nice to see you over in the YouTube, Donald. Um, yeah, sorry about that. That was me. I clicked on a thing and lost my audio. Uh, so all I was explaining is that I've got my uh, monster mask plugged in and I've got a PDM microphone plugged into it using the ST, the uh, Stemma QT connector rather. Um, this microphone is gonna detect uh, any sound over a certain threshold. And I'll show you the code for how that works in a second and how you set this up. Um, but the nice thing is this is an M0 or an M4, any M0 or M4 based board, this one's an M4, uh, makes it very easy to do USB HID uh, emulation of keyboards, mice, and game pads. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna emulate the space bar being pressed on a keyboard when I go over that threshold. Uh, and what that'll do is send the honk control over to the game when this is plugged in. Um, so to, to test this, what I'll do is I'm just gonna bring up uh, an instance of Adam here, and let's let's see which one is active. Okay, so you can see here I've typed in a few um, letters. I'm going to move that down so it doesn't get blocked. Uh, and now, if I take my controller here, honk, 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 right? Every time I say honk, and really any word or sound would work. You could beatbox into it, probably flick it, although I wouldn't recommend that. Um, but I'm gonna just stick with it uh, and live the goose lifestyle and say honk. Uh, you'll see it just sends a spacebar uh, command, the HID key for spacebar. And this is one of those magical things that makes it very, very easy to interface with games from microcontrollers is that uh, either the, the real uh, joypad, uh, keypad commands, or in this case, simply you can, uh, I think this is the default that's assigned as a spacebar, but you can, in most games, configure anything you like. So I'll leave it at spacebar. Um, and that will, oh, the bell is going off in the game. That will uh, activate the honking in there. So before I show you that, though, let's hop over to... Uh, Arduino, and, oh good, I still got my audio, I was worried I'd lose that. Let's see, let me drop this out. Okay, good. Uh, so I just wanna show you, uh, with Monster Mask, the code I'm running here is in the learn guide. It's the M4i's uh, code. So when you download the um, code in the learn guide for M4i's, you get a lot of, uh, little user configuration files as well as the main code file. So here in M4Eyes, um, let me see if I can zoom that up. Oops, I can't remember how actually. I don't think I can do that with a key command in here, can I? Nope, uh, I'll leave that alone. Um, but in the main uh, Arduino file, it gives you some instructions about how to deal with these other files. There's a uh, user CPP file, C++ file. And by default, the one called user CPP, these will all open into Arduino when you open just the M4i's sketch, by the way. At the top it says if, and it originally just says one up here. 
and then it says change this to zero to disable this code and then enable another. So this is essentially a switch for saying I'm not going to use the default. I'm going to look over here at the one called user HID. And this one I'm setting to a one that originally was at a zero. Uh, and then you have some options here for the uh, HID, which is a human interface device or USB uh, emulation, where we can send uh, different keys depending on the three buttons that we press. So you, you may know there are three um, buttons up here at the top of one of the eyes on the monster mask. So you can have those send, uh, here they're going to send U, A, and D. Uh, up, A, and down. And then by default, there's a um, accelerometer code. This is the code I was showing off yesterday and on, on um, Instagram and Twitter the other day, where I was shaking the mask um, to, to send the command. But it uh, turns out easier to use the, the microphone, and you're not moving your head quite as much. And it's kind of more fun to say honk. So I've set. Um, that to send zero. So rather than shake sending an HID key, it's just going to send zero, which is a bit of a hack to turn it off, but it works just fine. And then here's our sound reaction stuff. So here you'll notice it says sound reaction requires voice uh, true, the, the JSON um, pair to be set over in the config.i file. So I'll show that. Um, and if that is turned on, that's how we used the voice changer the last time. So with the voice changer uh, code, we're using the microphone. It was just, again, an easy way. Uh, Phil B created this like really quickly last night after I had requested sound uh, interaction with this. Uh, and he said, this is pretty simple, easy way. We're just going to tell it, pretend we're using the voice um, uh, changer, but we're not. We're just grabbing some of the microphone code. And then here's the part that matters. Sound uh, key code to send is HID key space. So here you could change that if you want it to be a H you change that to H. Uh, in some cases, you need to look up um, online what the different HID codes are for different keys. If you wanted a tab or something like that, it might not just be the word tab. It might be left tab or something. Uh, and then we have the sound threshold. So this is set at 10,000. I didn't end up having to change this at all. I think Phil tested this and came up with a great number that works. Uh, but you could adjust this if you wanted greater or lesser sensitivity to that. Um, that is all I had to change here. And then the last thing was I mentioned um, if I head back over to Adam, I'm going to open up the config.i file. So uh, where'd you go, Adam? There you are. Uh, so let's do a file open. Oh, that's not the one that's showing standby. And I'm just, you won't see this, but I'm going actually just to open up the config.i file that lives on the monster mask itself. So while it's plugged in, it shows up as a drive. Um, and it's just taking a moment. There we go. So it shows up a drive called CircuitPy because we use that to create the file system. And now I open up config.i. And here you can see I've just added this uh, right here. So voice in quotes and then a colon true. That's all that it takes to turn that bit on. And those instructions are inside of the uh, Arduino code. And I'll also put this into the guide. Um, all right. So enough talk. Let's, let's try it out. So. Um, let me take the completed mask that I made over there, and I'm going to plug this one in. Um, and let me show you, actually, this is a good camera to do this on. Uh, so here is my, I made two of these. So this one, again, I spray painted, I masked and spray painted that. Uh, and then you can see I separated the board into two pieces. And I've mounted them upside down. That just made it fit more nicely. And it gave me access to USB for charging and for uh, our HID commands, as well as um, the uh, buttons are accessible, a little more accessible that way. And then you can see I've got the um, Stemma QT cable plugged in. And there's my microphone. And I've actually just zip tied that. Let me show that on the overhead, actually. This, this view might make it easier. Um, I've got, oh, let me go the other way so I don't walk under that. I've got the little uh, nine pin JSTSH connector that connects our two halves of the board uh, in a really nice place to clip the PID microphone, which is uh, breakout has a couple of little mounting holes. So I've just mounted that there. It means it's kind of floating, which is nice. It's not touching the mask, so it won't be as sensitive to, to sounds from being tapped, I think. Um, and so now what I'll do is I'm just going to plug this in 
as an additional thing. Now I can have both my uh, little joystick controller here and my goose mask um, plugged in at the same time. Oh, he just heard me. So <laughs> let me turn up that volume and Honk. Honk. Oh, this is awesome. All right. So when I talk to you, he's also going to honk, but let me be quiet and torment the boy. Honk. 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 Honk, 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 honk. And that is how you scare the heck out of the little boy. <laughs> and so now that task is completed. And it makes me very happy. I love this game so much. Um, and I'll probably shoot a little, uh, a little demo video of this full costume uh, because I decided this would be make for a fun costume. You can wear the costume while you play the game if you like to really get into the mood. Uh, this will also make a nice little costume on its own just using the um, mask eyes. So if you look, uh, let me go back to the main view as the overhead. We have these really nice, creepy eyes. And actually, uh, another little bonus um, thing that I found out is, I uh, figured out is if you um, place the eyes in upside down and don't use rotation code, you get angrier, more suspicious looking eyes. Just the shapes of the eyelids in their natural state and the fact that the, the uh, lower lids are m moving a little more frequently makes it look kind of a little more sort of scary and like a dirty, hairy type of goose. At least, at least how I view it. Um, so, very important is a wo uh, you'll, you'll want a, a white hoodie. Uh, I also have the least practical thing I've ever owned in a pair of jeans, which is white jeans. Those are not going to stay white long if I actually wear those for anything other than goose costumes. Uh, these I'm going to figure out. They just make me look like a weird angel or something right now, but I think it might be a way to attach them to the arms. And then you'll notice that uh, pulling the mask on and then the hood helps a lot, especially if you have puffy hair. And you might want to hunch over a little. Honk. 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 Honk, honk. 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 Nothing. All right. Well, with that, I think we have run out of time, and my little goose friend is going to keep honking and honking. Uh, so let me set this down here, and uh, we'll wrap this up. And uh, I have no affiliation to the good uh, people at House House Games who made Untitled Goose Game, but I love the heck out of it, uh, and I encourage you to, to check it out. Um, <laughs> Donald Bell over on YouTube said, this is a Twitch I would actually watch. Yeah, I think, I think uh, costumed gaming is, is definitely the wave of the future, Donald. Uh, all right, well, thank you all so much. Uh, before we go, I will um, remind you that by not only enjoying the Goose lifestyle, but saying honk honk into your web browser when you go to check out. And if you wanted to, you could probably set this up so that when you honk, it types out the word honk dash honk. But that's our coupon code, 10% off today, uh, if you type in honk honk. And uh, that's good on anything you get in the store other than gift certificates, subscriptions, and software. Uh, 
for Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park. This has been John Park's Workshop, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye, everyone.